Hello everyone, so we're going to do the little demo for our more scenically minded friends. Starting off here with some color mixing basics, working in the cloud section. So um, they're not actually perfectly white at all. There's a few areas where we hit almost pure white, but almost all your whites are tinted. So I begin with white, I mix both a medium kind of warm gray into the white and then also a little touch of yellow into the white. And I am creating this base color at the bottom that is I don't know, 50% of that middle cloud. Uh, instead of adding just blue in, it actually has a little bit of green in it to help warm it up and make it feel stormier. So watch that you're recreating the kind of subtle nuances of the colors. They need a little more green, they need a little more warmth, they need a little more of this, so that they don't kind of deaden out on you. Also know that whenever we mix white, our titanium white, into something, it actually cools the colors. It doesn't just lighten them. It uh, makes them seem a little cooler. So you kind of have to fight that by sometimes mixing warmer before you add the white in. So we've mixed to that top teal color um, with black, some green, and a little bit of our ultramarine. I have a clean brush. I'm using a filbert, which has a rounded edge to it because we're going to be sort of doing a buffing, wet blending motion, and we want this sensation of like round, soft clouds. I'm using quite a lot of paint, especially for these initial layers. We just want to get that white covered. We want it to be very opaque, and then we can kind of work on creating multiple modeled colors within it. You can always use your brush to softly buff things or pick them up. I realized that I wanted that to be greener, have a little more black in it. That blue's gotten very primary, very royal blue. If I were to use, uh, you could also use a round brush for this with a point. Um, I like the filbert because it's a little stiffer, which is nice for the kind of mixing. It's almost like a scumbling for those of us who do scenic design. Um, if you used a flat brush that had points or corners, you might get something a little more geometric, a little bit more sharp. So having a little bit of roundness to your brush is really helpful. I'm There's kind of like a fissure running through this cloud that has a bit of darkness to it. It's almost like a deep slaty gray. So I'm using a bit of black. I'm doing this while it's all still wet, so it's kind of morphing in together and softening versus if I waited till it was dry, it would have a more strong presence in the painting. A little bit of white helps while it's still wet. And I'm sort of dabbing and using a very light touch, so it's mixing with the paint underneath it. I'm going to go ahead and create sort of the bottom color of this. Just start laying in a little bit of what this base color would be, even though that blue is not dry yet. I'm going to have to go over it just because I want to make sure that we don't have too much of the blue showing through. I'm not carrying this through all the way up to the finished edge, and we are overlapping the white over the blue so that we can have nice soft edges where it sort of like f has a fuzzy feeling as it approaches the blue. You can definitely tell it's painted on top of it. We're working wet into wet again, but we have more color blends here. So it starts with a truer white. It's not actually a pure white, it still has a tiny, tiny amount of gray in it, and then it heads into this warm gray that has a bit of yellow, little ochre in it, and then we head into the blues. Uh, clean your brush off anytime you're moving from a dark section to a light section or a warm section to a cool section. Uh, pen, like Clean the paint off of it, rinse it, and then pull the... We don't want, want almost any water on this kind of mixing. We do have a lot of paint on the page, and we're using that kind of scumbling, almost like X shape, and, and or you can use circular, you can use dabbing to apply the paint and sort of let it mix on the page. Wet blending. It's great. Adding that little touch of yellow at the very top, and you can kind of see that we've created some of the same textural feeling as was in the original. So we're going to start with the water now. I'm using quite a bit of gel medium. As you can see, I'm even occasionally applying it straight to my brush and using it instead of water as like a clean pass. Um, I have a lot of gel medium in this because, or glazing medium, because I want it to take a longer time to dry. It's gonna take me a little bit to blend such a big area and I need to work over larger sections at a time to be able to create the texture. You will probably not be able to paint all of the water at the same time without it drying on you. So work in little areas. I might do like the, 
you know, bottoms, I would work from the top to the bottom. So start in the distance, work to the foreground. So maybe behind the, you know, larger tree, you only do that section. And then we're going to start blending the mid down ground. And then we're finally going to do the foreground. But for here, we're doing a little tiny version of all of it. So I kind of laid a bunch of different sections of paint down sort of roughly where they're going to be. And then used a clean brush, cleaned it, uh, and moved up it maybe an inch at a time with a kind of a stumbling horizontal brush stroke and let it kind of organically mix but not perfectly mix um, making sure to clean my brush off as I move up the composition now I'm using the brush it's still my my flat brush my filbert but I'm using it turned sideways to create thinner lines of color it's a pretty thick amount of paint, which also buys me more dry time. You can see that I'm now using a little tiny brush to pick out more specific colors, more highlights, and to add more of the like ripple texture to it. So my brush was rather large for the scale of the ripples you can see in the original drawing. And anywhere that I think the color either got too dark or not quite the right specificity, I'm adding more white so that later if that white dries down, I'll be able to apply color on top of it. But if I just left, it would be hard to cover. But by adding the white, it gives me some place to go back and easily add color back in. I'm going to roughly draw in just a little bit of the building and the tree um, base so you can see what I'm creating shadows to. Otherwise, they're just floating shadows, which looks kind of weird, I realized. One thing I like is that you can see the highlight of the water just underneath the thing before the reflection starts. And the reflection is, of course, a much more blended, softer amount of that pigment. We have those couple of little blue streaks you can see. So I'm adding those in with my little brush and then taking my paintbrush with water on it or gel on it and it's clean and just, just ever so lightly like laying it on top of it and pulling it sideways. Don't hit your tree that you just built that is wet and then you have to pull it all back up. Um, but by using just some of the clear medium um, and, and those little small steps and then a larger brush that's just got clean water on it or, or just the glazing medium, you're able to very softly buff those in. But you can see that we've created the texture, the, the rhythm of it, we would keep fussing with it. I would probably do multiple passes of this technique to create enough of the texture and enough of the gradients. And you can always go back and add a little bit of those oranges, things like that, over some of the white areas. So skipping over to doing a little bit of our siding demo, um, I've gone ahead and sort of done a thin layer of white. It's not a true white, there's a bit mixed into it, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of gray, just a tiny, tiny amount. Um, and then we're working on adding some soft shadowing and some soft things to it. So that's why you can see me kind of mixing these colors. There's a little bit of a soft yellow following some of the areas. It follows both the linear edges of the trim and the siding, but there's also some sections where it covers a little bit bigger area. Um, I'm building kind of what we're going to call glazing. So I have a very transparent layer of that. It's a bit of the yellow mixed with glazing medium on the side, which lets me just sort of very softly buff it into the under layer of wet um, white paint. So now we're going to start looking at adding the shadow color. I'm mixing it with a bit of Payne's Gray, which in my book has a little bit of black and a little bit of like a navy look to it. This particular one from um, Arteza is a favorite shadow color of mine. It has a tiny amount of almost like a green or something in it too. So just kind of look at your picture and make sure that you're recreating what you've got in yours. I'm adding a lot of medium to it, which also makes it more transparent, so it's not as stark, and I'm working wet into wet, even though it's a detail section, so that it has that more blended quality, it has a softer presence than if I painted it dry, and the medium helps it not be so, so dark either. You can kind of build up to it instead of laying it down dark to begin with. You can see how quickly you can really give this a nice texture. Here again, we've got my flat brush, it's just damp, and a very, very soft uh, amount of pressure, and I'm just pulling in the same direction as the uh, 
siding is running to just very softly blur those, very softly blend them into the layers underneath them. So here's another glazing. We can use this to kind of, it's, you know, it's a tiny amount of paint compared to how much medium we have in it. And you can use that to create really soft, beautiful little blends, kind of buffing in textures, things like that. It's a good way to add a shadow to something or to change a color. If something came out brighter than you wanted, you can do a very thin glazed uh, layer on top of it to, to tilt the color one way or another. So that's sort of the basics for how I'd approach the siding. Obviously, you're going to have some gradients as you approach the far side of the house that has more shading on it. So now we're going to look at the shingles. I've got a wet blended kind of soft gradient from a very dark to kind of a more muddy medium brown. On the top, there's quite a bit of black added in and we're working wet into wet. I'm taking a smaller brush, mostly white and a touch of that bottom brown and creating some soft textures. I am so sorry I like, didn't realize till we were done with this how glary this video is, so I hope you can still see some of the textures we're creating. So this is a place where it might be useful to have some like sketching underneath for the perspective of your texture, but they're not perfectly drawn out. It's not like they draw every single shingle. It's just sort of a soft, like I do the horizontal lines, add a couple verticals, and then very softly buff them with my brush. I'm trying to find a way to show you this so that you can see it. There we go. Maybe this will do. So there's kind of the horizontal basis of them, and then I'm choosing a few vertical highlights to add in. And they're very curved in the original and kind of organically placed, which can be hard to recreate. To help them blend in and not seem so stark, I'm using the brush, a tiny amount of dampness on it, and just very softly glazing over it, but always in the same direction as the way we want the brush strokes to blend in. Do a little tree demo. I'm just painting it on top of all these other swatches we did, partially so you can see how easy it is to like add this in after the fact. So we're probably gonna paint the whole sky, we're gonna paint a lot of the water and stuff, and then add the tree on top. I'm doing the medium color of it, which has quite a bit of warmth in it, with kind of a sienna. And I'm not filling the whole thing up, but I'm filling maybe mm, just under three quarters. Now we're going to take a darker color, quite a bit of black in it, it's a very cool tone, and letting that cover, you know, one quarter to one third, depending on how the shadow looks in your image that you're looking at and just wet blending it right into the same like base color that we worked with. So now while everything is still wet, we're gonna start working on the highlights of these. I've got kind of a, it's very muddy, very taupey. Um, and instead of keeping it very smooth, I'm doing kind of a stuttering little uh, textural wash for it so that we get a touch more of the bark texture that you can see in the original. Being mindful of the fact that this original painting is much bigger than you are painting, so the proportion of your texture might seem a little bit larger. So try to use little tiny brush strokes and lean into the fact that you're probably working with a smaller brush here. It's the one time I'll give it to you. So by making this white, it allows me to add more colors on top of it and to work on blending it. So if you use your brush, even if it's a clean one without a lot of paint on it, because the paint underneath, the brown paint underneath is still wet, it's still there, they're gonna blend together. Um, I'm currently going through with a brush that has quite a bit of yellow in it and touching it into our whites. I let that section entirely dry and now we're gonna clean it up just a little bit. So I've got quite a bit of medium, uh, glazing medium and that middle brown and I can kind of ver take that like thin transparent layer push it over the lighter areas the white areas the texture will still show through some of the underpainting that we worked on will still show through but it kind of tints it and lowers the contrast a bit now I'm taking some of those warmer tones and those taupey light creamy tones and popping out just specific highlights instead of like one third of the tree width. So you can see how quickly you can build up those textures and that dimensionality within it. And those are most of the textures you'll run into in the painting. Um, I hope that helps. Good luck.